Uh, dear colleagues, I graduated uh, as an electrical engineer from the famous Technical University Leyte, St. Petersburg, Russia, in 1960, after working at the Research and Design Institute of High Frequency Currents, I returned back to Alma Mater for teaching and further research. I was awarded degree of Doctor of Science and title of professor in 1981. In 1995, I accepted the proposal of Mr. Robert Ruffini, Sr. to be a chief scientist at the Center for Induction Technology in Michigan, USA. Now I am director of research at Fluxtrol CAT company, uh, and last 15 years I was working on multiple projects based on an, an idea of magnetic flux control. I want to share with you my experience in and passion for this great uh, technology. Uh, first of all, uh, what is magnetic flux control? Then I want to talk about magnetic control as material for magnetic flux control, temperature management, protection, and uh, consider some selected applications. First of all, heat treating and brazing, melting installations, shielding, and then conclusion. Magnetic flux control is modification of magnetic flux value and distribution in the induction system by proper arrangement of active components of the coil. A common practice is to create a coil by optimization of the coil turns size and position. Some non-magnetic conductive components, usually copper rings called Faraday rings, are used for shielding purposes in induction systems. They use all this results in reduction of magnetic uh, of uh, induction coil power factor and efficiency. And for this reason, they are often called rubber rings. Quite the opposite, magnetic components can improve the coil efficiency and power factor. We'll consider here magnetic components. Depending on applications, they are called concentrators, cores, shunts, diverters, impeders, etc. Generally, let us call them magnetic controllers. Uh, the, what benefits can they provide? Oftentimes, the coil designers are not well familiar with magnetic controllers and try to avoid them uh, as uh, unreliable cost-adding components. It's true, but it's only very partially and case-dependable. Optimal magnetic flux control can give users the following technical benefits. Achieve optimal power and temperature distribution in the part. Heat required areas faster and thus increase um, production rate, improve parameters of the inductor, inductor and the whole installation performance. Whole installation performance could be improved because of better matching of the coil to power supply and less current demand uh, from the supplying circuitry. Shield specific areas from unwanted heating uh, or field exposure of personnel. Save energy in traditional innovative uh, applications, and then it can help you to control residual stresses and uh, reduce distortion of the part uh, with uh, heat treating. The, let's uh, <clears throat> consider a simple example of magnetic flux concentrator. C-shaped concentrator is applied to a single turn coil, and what we observe are higher part in the part for the same coil current. The total value of the power transferred to the part is high. Power concentration under the coil phase resulting in better utilization of the induced power and uh, how much it will improve uh, thermal efficiency depends on technology. For example, it will be different for scanning and uh, static. Uh, in uh, static, you don't use the side uh, power outside of the face of the uh, coil. In scanning, you use that, and, but use this only partially, not so effective as the main uh, power under the coil face. Uh, then elimination of external field. But <coughs> concentrate the push the coil current to one side of the coil tubing resulting in higher 
spoil losses for the same current. Computer analysis can predict all the results, but before using computer analysis, it's useful to make preliminary evaluation based on magnetic circuit uh, idea. Mag what is magnetic circuit? <clears throat> Any induction heating device has at least three closed loops. Evidently, the first loop is a coil winding that carries current that generates magnetic field. The second loop, or sets of loops, is a loop or loops of induced eddy current. And uh, then there is a, the third loop formed by closed magnetic lines that show magnetic field distribution in space. Field is characterized by a vector of flux density B and the value of magnetic flux phi. Some induction devices have materialized closed magnetic loop, such as on the picture uh, on the right side. Uh, it's uh, the transformer type induction heater, or an example of channel melting furnaces. But in majority of induction systems, the magnetic flux uh, flows along the return path uh, in the air, and the magnetic circuit is uh, contains the areas with air. Let's look at a very simple example of internal, or called ID, uh, coil. In this case, the return path is in a narrow space inside of the coil. Uh, installation of magnetic core here is uh, very beneficial. Similar to uh, Ohm's law, uh, we can write the equation uh, for driving force, which is ampere turns of the coils, flux value, and the magnetic impedance of the whole circuit, which is a sum of at least two portions. One is ZM, uh, which is magnetic impedance of the work area where the heating happens. ZM contains two parallel uh, pieces. One is describing a gap, magnetic resistance of the gap, and the other one describes influence uh, processes inside of the workpiece. And <clears throat> on the return path of the magnetic flux, we have Rm value. And uh, this in uh, Rm value is very uh, big in the in the case of ID coils, especially when the coil diameter is small. In general, for any portion of the magnetic circuit, uh, magnetic resistance is proportional to the length of this area and inversely proportional to magnetic permeability of material and the cross-section. If we reduce permeability uh, of, you know, on this uh, path uh, and make it very high, uh, Rm will tend to zero, and it minimizes ampere turns to the value In equal to phi multiplied by Zm. This is the, the uh, example that shows that magnetic control, uh, first of all, it reduces uh, current demand for the, uh, of the coil for the same job, for the same uh, power transferred into the uh, part. Now, what materials may be used for magnetic flux control? There are three groups of materials, steel or alloy laminations, ferrites, and soft magnetic composites, also known as magnetodielectric. The BH curves of these groups of materials <coughs> are on the picture. For steels, it's very well known. Uh, the magnetic flux density grows very quickly with magnetization force, and then it reaches uh, saturation or area close to saturation, which for laminations is approximately 1.8. If we keep in mind the space uh, between the sheets, it will be about maybe 1.7 Tesla, uh, the equivalent saturation flux density of steel lamination. The 
ferrite have the same behavior as uh, steels, but uh, with much, much lower proximity, uh, four times uh, lower value of uh, saturation flux density. And uh, it, uh, in, field, in weak field, permeability of ferrites is very high, but then it drops very quickly when material saturates. And finally, red areas show you a wide uh, range of uh, properties of magnetodielectric, which uh, the combine uh, the ferrite area at high saturations and uh, approach to the steel, uh, the upper curve, uh, for low frequency magnetodielectric. So let's uh, consider what is what are drawbacks and the advantage of different materials for magnetic flux control, specifically in induction heating. Electrical steels <coughs> have the best magnetic properties, low loss and high saturation flux density at low and middle frequency. They have high temperature resistance. In general, laminations are very mature materials, and we have wonderful, really, uh, electrical insulation, aluminum phosphate, uh, that can tolerate temperature up to 500 C and so on. It's a, a great material. Uh, but, and also what is uh, good, it has unlimited dimensions in the form of sheets and strips. It allows to make, for example, shunts for big uh, furnaces uh, the, uh, from these uh, strips. And, of course, it's important to mention that uh, laminations have lower price than other materials in stock material. What is the drawbacks? It's limited frequency range. Uh, typically, we uh, say that it's 20 kilohertz, but sometimes with good cooling and uh, so on, it could be used even at higher temperature. But thickness of laminations uh, drops sh should be uh, smaller when we go to higher temperature frequency. The second drawback is very essential. It's limited machinability. It's uh, stamping or laser cutting. Then, very bad performance in 3D uh, fields. In laborious assembling, especially at high frequencies when the thickness of lamps is uh, small. As a result, laminations are a great material for magnetic flux control in induction application at low frequency, let's say from line to 10 kilohertz. Ferrite. Uh, that's not good understanding in the industry about uh, possibilities, plus and uh, uh, minuses of ferrite. Yes, they have very high permeability in weak fields. They can work at high frequencies actually any frequency that when properly selected, low losses in selected grades, is a chemically inert, they have low price in mass production, in net shape, uh, shapes for electronics and so on. The drawbacks, a low saturation flux density, it's 0 0.3, 0 0.45 Tesla, which limits their application for, especially for low uh, frequency application. It has a relatively low uh, Curie point, uh, which is 250, sometimes a little bit higher. But magnetic properties start to deteriorate at about 150 C. They, uh, ferrites have relatively poor thermal conductivity, and what's very, very important, it's very poor mechanical properties. They're very hard, they're brittle, they're non-machinable with conventional tools, they are sensitive to mechanical and thermal shocks. Sometimes we met uh, cases when the supplier could not uh, meet our requirements in uh, tolerances because technology of manufacturing of uh, ferrites requires some uh, tolerance. They could be larger than what we need. Variety of ferrites is being used in induction technology in standard shapes for high-frequency transformers, chokes, high-frequency welding impeders, uh, etc. Finally, uh, soft magnetic composites. They can work in very wide frequency range, from line frequency to 13.56, uh, 
megahertz covering actually all the range of frequencies used for induction heating. Good magnetic and thermal properties, a high saturation flux density for low frequency material, it's approach 1.7 Tesla similar to illumination. Very important to next point, excellent machinability and versatility of material and good performance in 3D field. Some drawbacks, it's limited dimensions compared to steel, not to ferrite. Maximum size of material of a flux roll type, uh, which is the largest known for us, is 222 by 165 millimeter. Higher stock price than laminations. Combination of laminations in large regular areas and soft magnetic composites in 3D and complex geometry areas is very promising for induction installation of low and middle frequencies. Because uh, soft magnetic composites are not so well known by industry, uh, I want to show you two examples of materials. One is the Ferrotron 559H, which is the main high frequency uh, material. Uh, it uh, can work up to 13.56 megahertz. It has maximum permeability 19. It has good electric strength and may be really called soft uh, magnetodielectric. You can see that BH curve is uh, almost linear, uh, and the permeability of this material is almost constant in one wide range of magnetic loadings. The other material is a low frequency, relatively low frequency material. <coughs> it's flux roll 100. Uh, we say that this material is designed for 20, up to 20 kilohertz, but in some cases with uh, good uh, cooling or not uh, high magnetic loading could be used uh, as upper frequency up to 50 kilohertz. Maximum permeability of this material 130. What's very important, it has high thermal conductivity, which is 50% higher than stainless steel. It has good mechanical strength and machinability. Talking about permeability, we immediately must ask a question. If permeability of uh, material is, for example, 20, how can it work uh, in material and compete with the lamination that can have uh, permeability, let's say, 500? We made a special study using computer simulation the single turn coil had a C-shaped uh, concentrator, and the, the load was a, a plate in this case with uh, three areas. One is area B under the coil face, where we want to have uh, constant uh, power required for real technological effect. And we have two areas, A, uh, which are side uh, the areas. The considered parameters are current demand and power demand. Our frequencies were 3 kilohertz and 10 kilohertz. Here there is a curse of what we have. For, uh, I remind you again, it's the current demand to the coil in order to heat the central area to the same temperature at the same time. It means the same power should be under the coil phase. If, when we have no concentrator, permeability is one, we have much higher current demand. The top of curve shows that it's uh, uh, more than two times higher, two and a half times. Uh, and uh, this current demand drops when permeability grows. But the, this effect saturates relatively quickly and uh, the, uh, at permeability equal to 20, 30, we have almost all effect already achieved. And the further increase of permeability uh, does not give any advantage in terms of the uh, current uh, demand. Uh, the curves for required total power uh, for, of the induction coil are similar, but 
they show that even lower permeability will be sufficient uh, to achieve technological effect. And we can say that depending on technology, for open magnetic circuits, I want to underline, it's open. That's why we can't uh, compare that to transformers or something that when the magnetic circuit is closed. So for open magnetic circuits, the concentrated permeability of 20, 50, it's depending on many factors, is sufficient for induction systems. One thing is uh, the theory and simulation, and another one practice. So here's an example of experimental confirmation of heat intensity. Uh, we have here the vertical loop style induction coil with two zones, one has concentrated with luminations, and the other one soft magnetic composite. You can see that the heat pattern is completely identical. Now, the, one of the very essential questions, how to keep the magnetic controller at reasonable temperature? They are heated by magnetic losses in the material itself and by heat transfer from the hot part. Temperature depends on many factors. First of all, on the coil design, how it's cooled, and uh, uh, what uh, the areas of the contact of uh, cooked tube, uh, tube uh, uh, surface and the, con the controller. Then the controller material, I mentioned that some materials have very high thermal conductivity, which is good. Application technique. Uh, in the heating regime, frequency, power, duty cycle, etc., and environment. Methods to manage temperature. First is design uh, favorable, uh, favorably induction coil. Properly select magnetic material. It's a green technology. For high loading, we recommend, recommend thin thermally conductive epoxy or similar material. Additional cooling plates could be applied to the magnetic uh, controller uh, if required. And uh, in some cases, we can use internal cooling of the controller itself. On the right side, uh, you, you see the uh, maps of temperature inside of the uh, heated part and in the induction coil. Uh, in, that includes uh, the copper tubing and the uh, magnetic composite. Uh, pay attention that the scales are different for the part and uh, for the coil. How to predict that? How to receive this result? If we use a program flux 2D for simulation, it allows us to input formula for losses PV uh, versus uh, flux density B and frequency directly into the program. If field has two components, B1 and B2, it's possible to take into account material anisotropy using a vector of magnetic loss power density. I actually forgot to mention uh, that all pressed materials have certain anisotropy. The best magnetic and thermal properties are in the plane perpendicular to the direction of pressing and the minimum in direction of pressing. Uh, on the left picture, you have magnetic lines and uh, flux density map, and uh, on the right side is the temperature. And uh, for this very practical case, we uh, calculated and then proved that it's correct. Uh, maximum temperature is slightly above 120 C, which is very, uh, good number for materials that typically tolerate up to 250 hertz, uh, AC. Now, <clears throat> many induction coils are working in special environment, and we need to protect them from environment or to protect environment from them, such as in clean rooms. The ceramic coating may be effectively apply to the coil phase, including the copper and the controller, and it can protect uh, this, the coil from mechanical and thermal damage and uh, from electric discharge in the case of occasional touch of the hot part. 
ceramic uh, coating can be applied uh, by thermal process with a flame or plasma torch, or could be applied by brushing. The other type of protection is a plastic coating. Different plastic coatings allow the magnetic flux controllers work in aggressive atmosphere in clean rooms, biomedical and food packaging applications. On the left side, you have examples of magnetic controllers for uh, the food industry. Uh, the thin Teflon coating, about five microns only, uh, the, uh, protect the environment from uh, the material, some uh, particles, dusting, crusting, and so on. Uh, it's uh, approved by FDA uh, in the United States for food uh, industry. On the right side, you have a sample of, uh, of material coated by nylon within fluidized bed technology, but also electrostatic uh, powder coating could be applied very successfully. I want to mention one more uh, method of improvement of uh, properties of ready-to-use parts. It's impregnation. Impregnation is a saturation of a surface layer of metallic or composite materials by special epoxy resin under high pressure. It results in the following. Clean surface with sealed pores, with better mechanical strength, reduced corrosion, and prevention of water aggressive fluid penetration inside of the material. Uh, the penetration for our materials, I mean uh, soft magic composite of flux roll type, is about five millimeters. You can see that on the right side. I want to mention also that soft magic controllers may be uh, used as a structural components. For example, in inside of induction coil for quenching supply, or it could be they can be attached to the chamber of uh, chamber wall, uh, shield frame, uh, and so on using stainless steel insets. It is the best well-proven uh, technique. Now let's talk about some. Uh, Typical application. First of all, uh, magnetic plus control induction heat treating. On the left side, you have the multi position coil uh, for camshaft hardening and the flux, uh, the soft metal composite shields applied on each turn in order to have uh, the well defined uh, pattern of uh, hardening on each cam without interfering. Uh, be between them. Here, let's start with the effect of concentrate on hair pin coil performance. The hair pin coils may be greatly improved by magnetic concentrate. Concentrate improve coil efficiency and power factor. Uh, local installation of the concentrator redistributes power along the coil length and therefore effectively control the temperature uh, pattern in the, in the part. On the right side, you have uh, the picture of, of installation, which became actually classic in demonstration of effect of concentrators. The uh, hairpin uh, coil has two areas. One is without concentrate, the left side, and then the right side has uh, the soft magnetic composite concentrate. And you can see that the heating intensity is uh, completely different. And uh, our computer simulation uh, made with ELTA program uh, confirmed exactly uh, this result. Actually, this experiment was designed using preliminary uh, computer simulation. Now, uh, the crankshaft hardening. Crankshaft was the first part being hardened by induction uh, in the early 1930s. And, but big improvements in this technology have been made recently, and significant role in that be, uh, belongs to uh, magnetic control, magnetic controllers. The one of the types of uh, 
coil for hardening is rotational hardening of crankshafts using this coil, sometimes called the uh, horseshoe coils. These coils were developed initially by uh, Elotherm company as early as in the beginning of the 1940s. And it's used until now with many improvements. And here you can see uh, the soft magic composite uh, controller applied very carefully uh, in the sections. Why in sections? Uh, because these coils have very high power loading. And when they, you turn them, the surface of the copper uh, it's, uh, expands. Uh, plus, we have strong electrodynamic forces. Because of that, uh, we need to be sure that there will be no separation of the concentrator to uh, and the, the uh, coil tubing. For that, uh, it's a good uh, practice to make that in several sections. And on the left side, you can see very challenging hardness pattern that could be achieved with uh, such uh, coils. The other type of uh, crankshaft hardening is hardening using clamshell, which uh, opens uh, single turn uh, coils. Uh, in this case, uh, we uh, want to improve the process efficiency, protect certain areas of the part from unintended heating, prevent installation components, frame and machine part from uh, heating, and eliminate influence of coils, magnetic field, and sensors and control system elements. You can see on the picture that for bare coils, we have magnetic field far outside of the work area. And the heat pattern, the temperature on the right side, uh, is, uh, it's, uh, sorry, it's a power density. Power density is not limited to the work area, uh, but also uh, we have heating of the flanges. In this case, they may be called VAP of the crankshaft, uh, which is negative in sense of lost energy, uh, lo uh, lose control of heat pattern, uh, and additional distortions. If we apply C-shaped uh, controller, or even uh, only uh, thin, about one and a half millimeter side magnetic shield, uh, we can prevent, prevent actually eliminate uh, the unintended heating and improve heat pattern control and reduce power distortion. Here's an example of this uh, technology. It's for non-rotational crankshaft hardening coil, called the sharp C inductor. And uh, we have uh, thin uh, plates of soft magnetic composite, uh, which not only uh, prevent uh, web uh, heating, but uh, also accurately control the heat pattern and improve the coil efficiency. The other uh, example, uh, it's not only related to crankshaft. It's power distribution control, uh, which is very essential in, uh, uh, in the case of heat treating or brazing of complex joints on uh, parts. On the left side, we have uh, the coil for single shot hardening of shaft. And the uh, magnetic controller strategically positioned on the coil provide effective heat pattern control. On the right side, uh, you have here horseshoe coil for brazing of the aluminum heat exchanger. In addition to big improvement in coil efficiency, the magnetic controller precisely distributes power between three components of the joint guaranteeing high quality of brazing. Now let's go to melting furnaces. Here the goals of applying magnetic control are improvement of furnace parameters, efficiency, power factor, and uh, re reduce uh, the current demand. Optimal distribution of power and electrodynamic forces in the melt and uh, induction uh, coil shielding. Reduction of losses in the 
uh, furnace structure chamber and fuel reduction of road places in order to comply to the maximum permissible exposure level. One of the most interesting uh, examples, uh, it's uh, uh, recently uh, made a, a study uh, at Fluxtrol uh, of in possibility to improve the properties of cold crucible furnaces for melting metals using magnetic control. Cold crucible furnaces for melting metals have very low electrical efficiency, usually 25, 30 percent, and sometimes uh, maybe up to 50, but not more, because the crucible fingers obstruct magnetic field penetration to the melt surface. Intense experiments and theoretical studies show that magnetic controllers can strongly improve the furnace parameters and power distribution along the melt. And we made the prototype mock-up uh, and uh, made tests at frequency 10 kilohertz. Here is a magnetic circuit for a uh, cold crucible furnace. On the right side, you can see the uh, circuit, which is more complicated than I showed you before. It, it contains uh, the portion one uh, that describes the heating area uh, in the melt. Uh, part two uh, shows uh, area, uh, describes uh, fingers uh, for axial components of magnetic flux flowing along the fingers. Three corresponds to the gap and four to the return path of magnetic flux. But we have also here two areas, five top and five bottom, which describe magnetic uh, the uh, resistance uh, of the narrow areas between oil and the bottom Faraday ring. If for this type of induction of, of cold crucible furnace, we have uh, this ring and the top further. This, uh, the 5T uh, and 5B, uh, what we call them, top and bottom rings, they can bring magnetic flux to the surface of the cold crucible. But there is a big problem in penetration of magnetic flux through the slits in uh, cold crucible fingers. Uh, it's uh, portions 6 B and uh, 6 T. On the left side, uh, you have magnetic flux lines, which confirms that the, the uh, magnetic circuit, uh, what I talked to you about, uh, is uh, reasonable. It's a 2D simulation, which uh, we developed uh, uh, and uh, which gives you general impression about the magnetic fluxes. But for accurate uh, study of uh, processes and cold crucible, we need to make definitely 3D simulation. 3D simulation for this mock-up was made, and uh, for we have here several cases. A is no magnetic control at all. B, all sets of magnetic components, top and bottom rings, shunts and insets. What are insets? Insets, it's realization of idea uh, that on the top and the bottom, uh, the part of the system, where magnetic flux should go through the fingers, uh, we place, uh, we expand uh, the gap or the part of the gap and uh, place there some magnetic material, uh, soft magnetic composite, uh, that can bring, can help magnetic flux to penetrate through these narrow uh, areas. You can see here the 3D model, and then uh, you have an A uh, from top to bottom. Uh, the uh, portion of the finger with current density color map, then uh, the color map of uh, currents in Faraday ring, you can see very bright uh, strip uh, with high uh, current density, which 
uh, is just under the uh, slit in the cold crucible. And you can see on the bottom uh, the uh, current density in the coil. On the right side B, we have the same uh, the pictures, uh, but with magnetic controllers. You can see, for example, that the current density uh, with concentrator is much, much lower than current density without. And that is made uh, for the same power inside of the melt. Uh, in general, for this particular mock-up, uh, we have uh, a reduction in current demand almost 1.8 times and the total furnace power 2.5 times uh, the, with the same heating and melting effect. The uh, other parameters which is very essential for cold crucible melting uh, it's distribution of power along the, <coughs> the front, the melt. These results were confirmed by industrial application. Here you can see the uh, real working uh, installation, CC melter for bottom pouring of titanium alloys. Now, uh, I want to show you some slides about the uh, special melting uh, installations. Here we had on the left side ceramic line induction coil uh, with the side and bottom soft magic composite shield for melting radioactive materials in glove box and uh, with uh, applying of uh, this uh, shield uh, we were able to uh, increase the size of the coil for the same radioactive uh, chamber and uh, improve uh, the parameters. With this, uh, with this total uh, power of the coil the same, power in the melt increased 2.7 times. Shielding in open induction installations, it's more and more important uh, the issue. On the left side, uh, we have magnetic field lines for bare coils with efficiency 85%. It's one of the real industrial cases. Then, in order to protect the personnel from our magnetic field, uh, we applied two Faraday rings, and the efficiency drop, dropped 70 to 72%. The optimal solution is uh, to use a combination of magnetic uh, shunt uh, and uh, uh, Faraday rings. In this case, we have excellent uh, shielding and the efficiency dropped very, very little from 85 to 84 percent. So we can design and we can predict uh, temperatures and so on. Uh, here we have uh, the uh, resulting curves, the external magnetic field strength. Uh, you can see that for bare coil with a blue line, uh, we have uh, maximum permissible level is the distance of two meters from the surface of the coil, which is too far. Uh, if we have the rings and shunts, uh, is a purple or the curve, uh, this distance drops to about less than 400 millimeters, which is very good. And uh, only Faraday rings, so only uh, magnetic shunt uh, are somewhere in between of these two curves. And uh, finally, I want to mention about one interesting study that we made for a uh, crucible furnace for melting steel. So this is very mature technology and very competitive areas, and it looks like everything is done. You can do nothing there more. And uh, together with the company LMAC Corporation, uh, we made the study for a real induction coil of 10 tons, uh, working at frequency about 300 uh, hertz, and this uh, uh, coil made of two parallel sections, and the voltage is uh, 2 kilovolts. Uh, the idea is to place additional magnetic controller in the area where there is uh, some uh, narrow bottleneck 
for you know, magnetic uh, flow path. So these areas are just above uh, or under the induction coil because uh, the, the typical induction furnaces of this type have Faraday rings uh, that protect uh, the frame heating. What are these results of use this small additional uh, the uh, poles? On the left side, you can show, uh, you can see uh, this green, it's additional pole, and the gray uh, part on the right is the stainless steel uh, shunt. Uh, this, uh, the curves show that introduction uh, of these poles uh, significantly reduce losses in the coil uh, turns. And it's interesting to make evaluation of uh, the economical effect. The, despite of relatively small improvement in, in efficiency from 77% to 82%, which is 5.6% only, due to high power of this, the furnace, we have saving uh, 1,120 megawatt hours per year, which corresponds to approximately $112,000 plus we have possible savings in capital investment, $5,000 on reduced capacity battery, and $36,000 are due to smaller inverter, inver inverters uh, that can be used. This example show you that uh, the, the advantages of uh, magnetic flux control uh, should be uh, considered even in mature technologies, not only in innovative. And conclusions. Magnetic flux control in system for induction heating, melting, and electromagnetic processing of material is used for a very long time, actually, but it's still, to my opinion, under-evaluated. New materials and computer simulation allow us to optimize magnetic circuits amid strict demands in the industry and optimize the overall uh, performance of installations. Both laminations and soft magnetic composites may be used at lower frequency, up to 20 kilohertz. For higher frequency, soft magnetic composites may be effectively used with some competition from ferrite.